Welcome to Fantastic Vision. Please subscribe us before you watch today's video. As we all know, in order to curb the progress of Chinese companies in the chip industry, the United States has resorted to amending its rules to restrict foreign companies such as ASML of the Netherlands from supplying advanced semiconductor equipment to Chinese chipmakers. At the same time, NVIDIA's high-end AI chips have been explicitly banned from shipping to Chinese companies. This is intended to prevent Chinese companies from overtaking the US AI industry after acquiring NVIDIA's AI chips. Against this backdrop, the US imposed new restrictions on China on September 12, adding 23 more Chinese companies to the new entity list released by the US Department of Commerce. Meanwhile, relevant Chinese authorities have long been preparing countermeasures. As the roles of China and the US in the chip industry begin to reverse, the Ministry of Commerce has issued two documents in quick succession, launching a battle to defend Chinese chips. First, the two announcements issued on September 13 launched anti-dumping and anti-discrimination investigations into analog chips originating in the United States. These investigations target analog chip products shipped in China by small and medium-sized U.S. chip companies. The timing of this investigation is highly fortuitous, coinciding with the release of a new U.S. entity list and the extension of the investigation period from 2022 to 2024. This coincides with the implementation of U.S. chip subsidy policies. It can be said that during this period, U.S. chip companies, through government subsidies, further seized control of China's analog chip market. Data from the Jiangsu Semiconductor Association indicates that while the volume of analog chip imports into China surged by 37%, the value of imports plummeted by 52%. Based on this data, China's anti-dumping investigation against US companies is a foregone conclusion. The specific penalties and amounts to be imposed upon the results of the investigation are clearly defined in relevant regulations. This countermeasure is both well-timed and justified. It not only creates favorable conditions for the development of domestic analog chips, but also, through reasonable penalties, forces U.S. companies to recoup some of their profits. Crucially, the U.S. has been unable to find any grounds for rebuttal, preventing them from exploiting the issue. Secondly, the State Administration for Market Regulation has also decided in accordance with the law and regulations, to conduct a further investigation into NVIDIA, a US-based company. The preliminary investigation determined that NVIDIA violated the anti-monopoly law of the People's Republic of China and its previous antitrust review decision regarding its acquisition of shares in Mellanox Technologies. This indicates that an investigation into NVIDIA is now on the agenda. China's chip sector is no longer in the passive defensive position of 2019. The offensive and defensive roles of China and the US have now reversed, and no matter how severe US chip control measures become, they will not be able to further impact the operation of China's industrial chain. When the US previously implemented chip controls against Huawei, Huawei faced supply shortages across its entire smartphone portfolio from memory chips to CPUs and power management chips, causing its smartphone business to temporarily come to a standstill. But now, Huawei's chip business has not only recovered, but it has also completed mass production of the Kirin 9020 chip using a domestically produced equivalent 7 nanometers process. Smartphone production has directly broken away from its reliance on US suppliers, and the development and development of the domestic chip industry chain has reached record highs. As for analog chips, automotive-grade chips, and other chips for industrial applications, Chinese chip design companies have already made early preparations despite US regulations. For more mature chip products, China has become an exporter, 
eliminating the need to import large quantities from U.S. companies. This role reversal has also made it difficult for the U.S. to implement a new round of chip control measures. Thus, artificial intelligence and AI chips have been the most frequently mentioned topics by the U.S. this year. The U.S. still has a certain technological advantage in these two areas, allowing it to implement preemptive containment measures against Chinese companies. To be honest, the landscape of the mature chip market has changed. The Ministry of Commerce's anti-dumping and anti-discrimination investigations into analog chips are intended to protect China's mature chip industry. After the results of the relevant investigations are released, chip products that China already has sufficient supply for may be wiped out of the Chinese market. After all, China already has a surplus of its own chips, so why buy from US companies? And with the impending antitrust investigation against NVIDIA, China could, if it so chooses, severely damage US AI chip exports at any time. This, in turn, would create greater market space for the commercialization of Chinese AI chips. Therefore, the US isn't talking about AI chip controls this time. Instead, it's about adding more Chinese companies to the so-called entity list, attempting to artificially disrupt the supply chain and thereby limit the technological advancement and development of Chinese companies. Little do they realize, that these forces acting to disrupt the supply chain are mutually reinforcing. Restricting Chinese companies from purchasing equipment from American companies will ultimately only expedite their search for viable alternatives, thereby gradually weaning them off their reliance on American technology and equipment. If Trump is still living in the America first dream, he should wake up. Today's China is no longer a passive participant, who can only accept the rules, but a capable and confident rulemaker. The Ministry of Commerce's wielding of trade remedies this time is precisely using internationally accepted trade relief measures. Anti-dumping and anti-discrimination investigations are all well-founded, legally compliant, and well-founded. The People's Daily put it well in those 21 words, technological self-reliance protects industry, Countering injustice and abiding by the rules and win-win cooperation ensures long-term success. Under U.S. blockades, Chinese companies have achieved in just three years what took the West ten years. If the blockade and suppression continue, how long can the U.S. maintain its technological advantage? Rather than harming others and benefiting oneself, it's better to establish a win-win economic framework as soon as possible. What are your thoughts on this? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss.